Good afternoon, everyone. One of the driest places on the planet, the largest sand desert on our earth, Rub Alkali lakes have formed there from space, from the ground. And the dust storm on Mars now is the most intense dust storm ever observed on that planet. It engulfs the entire planet. It has gone from daylight to darkness and the entire planet is shrouded. You need to ask yourself with all the planets lining up on one side of the sun the week after next, is this an effect of the electric universe? If you're thinking about growing sprouts and you do not know how, True Leaf Market has guides for you on how to in case you just don't even know where to start. The True Leaf Market Adapt 2030 link is below in the description box along with all the links for tonight's articles and images. And when we're looking for signs in the heavens, we're seeing it even on other planets. But let's start back here on our own Earth. The largest sand desert, one of the driest places on our planet. This is the Arabian Peninsula at Rub al Khali Sand Desert. Now, after Cyclone Makunu rolled over Oman and Yemen, dropping three years worth of rain in just a single day, Images coming across social media, pickup trucks driving through flooded streets. You saw the waterfalls coming off the mountains that look like Niagara Falls in some of the cities. And this is what it looked like out in the desert area. That water running off, cutting channels this deep. Standing water as well. But this is where it gets really interesting. You can even see the lakes starting to form there. And from the NASA Earth Observatory, they had some strange images. Add a little color to it, bring out some contrast. And where you see green, that is water. Three days after the cyclone and it's still there. They're actually offering tours out there to see it. Now this is what it looks like from space. But when we take a closer look from the ground level, every one of those lakes you saw is at least this large unbelievable change in the desert here now apparently the the lakes have formed in three different areas of that driest place on our planet not just one now the good news in all of this is people expect their camels to be fed for at least two years from the rainfall they're talking about new vegetation growing it's going to sprout up. They're going to help feed the livestock. People are going to save an enormous amount of money other than needing to buy feed for their animals, goats included. This is truly a gift from the heavens. And when I saw these images, I'm like, you know what? I've seen that somewhere else before. Let's go over up to northeastern Brazil National Park. Every single year, it does the same thing. The monsoon comes in, it rains, it fills up the sand dune area, and then it slowly evaporates. This is exactly what just happened over in Oman and Yemen. Now on to this epic dust storm that's completely covering Mars. This is called a historic dust storm. It's the largest dust storm that has been recorded on this planet. Now I couldn't get exact details if this was when we invented telescopes. Is this the largest dust storm in the last 500 years that we've seen on this planet? Now, I can't get into that great of detail, but at least in the last 200 years, this is the largest dust storm. Now, it started back in uh, the beginning of June, and then it slowly built and built. June 13th, it got really intense, the size of a couple of continents. And by June 21st, it has completely covered the entire planet. It's been a 20-day dust storm so far, and it's continuing to amplify and even get thicker and stronger. Now you really need to ask yourself, with all these changes going on as we're heading into the grand solar minimum, we would expect strange effects not only on our own planet, but other planets as well. We live in an electric universe, everything's connected to our sun electromagnetically, and here we go. This is beyond anomalous. This just goes right into the twilight zone category of being too strange of timing to be anything else except 100% correlation to the grand solar minimum and also where all of the planets are on one side of the sun coming up in another week and a half. View from the sky from the rover here as the dust storm enveloped day after day. And look how dark it is on the right side. You can see the haze was obscured originally left side there. That's earlier in the month. And then as they were taking photos, the sun gets fainter and fainter and fainter. 
Now you have to ask yourself also with our volcanism on our planet increasing, which color strata are we going to get into with the volcanic haze that's going to encompass our planet too in about two or three years as these major volcanoes start to go off as we get deeper into the grand solar minimum. Left side is what Mars normally looks like. Right side is that now planet-wide dust storm. I want to bring you here to an event as well. A lot of people are covering this now. All of the planets are going to be lined up on one side of the sun coming up in July and the first week of August. I think it's happened three times in the last 120 years. But it's just really intense timing as well that we're going in. All these planets are lining up. We're going into the grand solar minimum. And now we're really starting to see effects on Mars as well as our own planet with the ramp up and hail and ferocity of winds and out of season cold and all time record cold all around our planet, both northern and southern hemisphere. The electric universe. What more amplification can we expect over these next three weeks? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are indeed changing.